Hey friends, today we're going to be working on finishing up our faces and especially learning how to use an ebony pencil. So many of us have forgotten to draw our ears, so remember ears start at your eye, go up to your eyebrows, and line up with that bottom edge of your nose. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. I'm drawing a hanging earlobe, meaning that the earlobe hangs off of the head here. Some of us have also forgotten to add some necks, so remember your neck is thick, it has to support your head. It should be a minimum of a full hand's width. Then once you get there, bring shoulders out all the way to the side, and you can always curve around and give a shirt. So now we have those basics. Remember, one side of the face is going to be all symbols. Uh, if you haven't drawn those, make sure you're working on those. But this is an ebony pencil. An ebony pencil is very similar to a normal pencil, except for the darkness that it can get is way darker than a regular pencil. So here's a regular pencil, and I'm going to press as hard as I can with this regular pencil. And that's how dark it gets. This is technically called an HB number two because it's hard and bold. This, as an ebony pencil, gets significantly darker. And this one is just a B6. Not necessarily important, but it's bold and it's darker. Uh, when you are adding highlights and shadows to your face, you are going to want to practice making a range of values. So going as hard as you can with a pencil before it breaks. And then slowly, but surely, getting lighter and lighter, pressing less and less hard each time you go back until you have a smooth transition into white. If I look here, I can kind of adjust, make it a little bit smoother transition. And I'm actually going to turn down our lights as well so we have a little bit better exposure on the camera. There we go. So when we are doing this, we are all going to start out with kind of a middle value of darkness. And then from there, we are going to get lighter and blend in. So how do we start this? Uh, we are going to start by, I like to turn my paper, and we're going to start by just layering in the edge of the shadow. We have shadows around our head. Ooh, don't forget her hair, too. Have some hair. There's some hair. Ooh, hair. So anyway, we're going to layer in those shadows. Just kind of that medium tone. I'm looking at kind of a medium value, medium dark here. And then I'm going to slowly start to bring that shadow out. Pressing less and less hard. Every time two objects overlap each other, a shadow is created. So it's darker over here. And then slowly transitions to lighter. Now, you don't have to go all the way to white but you want to get at least into the middle of your light values. So if I look at this, I want to get at least into this middle white value here. Then from there, I can use a special tool called a blending stick. That is this thing. And we are going to use this to rub against our ebony pencils. This does not work with colored pencils. This just works with ebony pencils. And it does work with a regular graphite pencil as well. And we are going to color that shadow that we made until it smooths, so it blends it, it's, because it's a blending tool. So I'm going to bring that out. If I look here, I still have a pretty dark shadow. It doesn't transition very nicely. So I'm just going to go back, and notice that when I'm doing this, I'm almost laying my color coloring tool completely down on the table. I'm not using the point. I'm using the very side, the flat edge. Then I'm going to layer in the shadow around the nose. And again, I'm doing this layering in like a middle value. I'm layering in the bridge of the nose. Just coloring that. You might look at it and say, I look a little crazy right now. But I'm going to smooth that out by slowly transitioning to lighter. Make some areas a little bit darker. If you need to erase, just erase. They erase very nicely. Laying it down again and smoothing out that shadow. Make a little shadow around the nostril. Make a little shadow inside the nostril. Make a shadow for that upper lip cupid's bow area and under the chin. If I can bring that shadow out a little bit more on the eyelid and then you'll do it on the ear as well. Then you'll take your blending tool and smooth it out. Smooth it around. Move it out. And just because I've already done this once in some areas doesn't mean that I can't go back and layer or erase as I need to. 
going to bring those out. I could even use my finger to help blend it as well. A little bit more here. Okay. So that's some pretty basics for the face. I'm going to layer a little bit more in for the crease of the eye. I can bring in the eyebrows by going straight up. And I'll zoom in for you so you can see what I'm doing. So going straight up and slowly curving those eyebrow hairs around the eye, turning your paper to be successful if you need to. Make it actually look like real hair. Once you've colored the eye, which I normally color by radiating out in a circle, just like this, then I color the pupil black in the middle, and then I'll add a little bit of shadow under that eyelid, and then I'm not necessarily going to smooth out everywhere, but I'm going to blend this out just a little bit. I can make it a little bit darker around the edge of that iris. And then once I have that all layered in, I can add my eyelashes. I typically don't add eyelashes until I get to this stage. Um, I think it's a lot more successful. Lower eyelashes, you really only need to show them going uh, until halfway on the eye. And don't be afraid of putting an eyelash going in like the wrong direction. Because sometimes we have ones that stick out or stick in a different direction from another one. Okay, let's talk lips. So when you have two objects overlapping each other, one of them will get a shadow, so the one on the bottom will get a shadow. So where the two lips overlap, I'm going to build a shadow here using the side of my ebony pencil. I'm going to layer that in, add a little bit more in here and in there. There we go. A little bit more on that bottom lip. And then again, I'm going to smooth those out. Bring that color all over. And even if you're doing this with a colored pencil rather than an ebony pencil when you color, um, you can still add shadows by changing the pressure of how hard you're using a coloring tool. Um, so if you press harder on a coloring tool, it'll obviously make it darker. Um, so you can use the same color that you used for your all over skin tone. Again, if you're using colored pencils. Um, and then just press harder on these same areas where we're talking about shadows. Uh, even if you're not using an ebony pencil, you are still required in this picture to show highlights and shadows. It is important that we start to understand those things. Bringing in that shadow, layering it pretty heavy underneath the head. And then I, when I'm doing it, I'm layering it almost to our darkest value. And then I'm going to slowly transition it using, again, the side of my ebony pencil. I'm not using the tip. It's very hard to layer colors. Uh, and use this ebony pencil when you use the tip. And then once you get that, you can come back either with your finger and smooth things out, or again, use that blending tool. Just like that. And then in the ear, on the side of the ear as well. Again, it'll be darker when two objects overlap. The one that's behind gets darker. If you'd like to add details into the ear, you may as well. The one parts on the back and inside will be darker. When two objects overlap, the one on the bottom is darker. Typically. Anyway, layering that in, smooth transition. Don't just put in color. Show the range of values of how you get to that lighter color. You can smooth it out as well. And then when you do hair, you're going to do an all over value. If you have dark hair, you'll do an all over dark value. If you have light hair, you'll do a lighter value. I have medium dark hair, so I'm going with medium to start. Then I'm gonna layer in a little bit darker again where two objects overlap. The one that's in the back gets darker. There we go. And layering it in. And obviously you'd wanna do this everywhere. There we go. And then once I'm done, I'm going to draw the lines of where the hair would go. And I can draw those in pretty dark. And if I want to make areas darker than what I've already done, I can layer those dark areas in just like that. So, zooming out. 
this is what we look like. I hope this was helpful, and hopefully my camera work was good enough that you guys were able to see. Um, but don't be afraid of trying, and if you hate it, it erases really nicely. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions.